Um, so I'm going to talk about the response to the emergence of blue tongue disease in Northern Europe. Um, so blue tongue virus causes blue tongue disease in ruminants, um, with sheep being the most affected. Um, typically the symptoms are swelling and reddening of the hooves and around the face, and you also get this uh, cyanosis of the tongue in severe cases, which is where the name blue tongue comes from. So the virus is transmitted by small biting midges called culicoides, and these are found pretty much everywhere in the world apart from Antarctica and um, New Zealand. So blue tongue was previously a disease of the tropics and was found between about 40 degrees north and 35 degrees south, which is, you probably can't see the map very well at the bottom, but there's two red lines just sort of showing the affected area. Um, and then in 1998, we started seeing blue tongue incursions into southern Europe. In 2006, blue tongue emerged in northern Europe for the first time. So blue tongue uh, serotype 8 was um, the outbreak that happened in Northern Europe and it was first detected in August 2006 and by January 2007 there were 2,000 infected holdings in Germany, the Netherlands, Belgium, France and Luxembourg. The virus successfully overwintered and re-emerged in the spring of 2007 um, and then spread very rapidly um, into Northern Europe all the way up to Scandinavia. And this is the largest and most economically damaging outbreak of blue tongue to date anywhere in the world. Um, it went, in 2008, there were over 30,000 infected holdings across Europe. Um, it reached the UK in late 2007. Um, and this wasn't actually a shift in the um, previous, in the known vector species, which is Culicoides amicola, which is responsible for the outbreaks in southern Europe. This was actually the virus jumping into a new species um, of midge, and it was actually six species of northern um, of midges that are present in northern Europe. Um, so these are the two uh, wings that you can see at the bottom are the two groups um, that are the vectors, so Culicoides pulicaris and Culicoides obsoletus. Um, so the UK response um, was a voluntary vaccination campaign that began in April 2008 in England and Wales. So DEFRA had stockpiled 22.5 million doses of vaccine and this was made available to farmers through uh, their veterinary practices. The affected area of blue tongue in the, in the UK was um, around East Anglia in the southeast and the vaccine uptake in this area was greater than 80%. And the result was that there were no new cases of blue tongue in the UK in 2008. Um, and these three maps at the bottom show this. So we have the outbreak starting in mainland Europe in 2006. And then you can see in 2007, there's further spread, including to the UK. And then the UK vaccinated. And we are clear um, of the virus, but it continues to spread further north to Scandinavia in 2008. Um, so this map shows the restriction zones that were in place in 2009 and I just wanted to put it in to highlight the large areas that are under restriction zones and this is um, mainly because of the potential for infected midges to be blown such long distances um, by the wind. Um, so there were um, there have been no cases of blue tongue 8 reported in the EU since 2011 uh, the UK declared themselves um, blue tongue free in 2011 and France declared in 2013 with their last cases in 2010. And then as um, Marianne mentioned, in August last year, um, we had new cases of blue tongue serotype 8 popping up in central France. So immediately a 150 kilometre exclusion zone was um, put up around the infected premises and in September, um, a vaccination campaign was started and this prioritised animals in infected premises, those intended for export um, and those involved in insemination programmes. And from August until now there have been 220 outbreaks reported. So um, this map you can see the current um, BTVA outbreak in central France highlighted by the pink area um, and also there's um, an outbreak going on um, over in Eastern Europe, which is the brown area, and this is of blue tongue serotype 4, 
And from a UK point of view, this was what we were keeping an eye on, what we were worried about. And now actually Blue Tongue 8 has popped up in France, so this has shifted our focus a little bit. So these are, um, this is the current distribution of BTV8 in France. So this map was produced, um, I think, six days ago, so it's up to date. Um, the stars represent the PCR positive cases um, at, well, it's actually each star represents a, a holding where there's been PCR positive case. Um, and the pink area is the restriction zone that's in place. The light pink area is where entomological surveillance has been done and it's believed to be um, vector free at the moment. So where has this outbreak come from um, in central France? Um, it could be an entirely new introduction of BTV8, um, but the index farm had no recent international imports. There's a possibility that it's been silently circulating since the last outbreak. Um, in order for France to declare itself BTV8 free in 2013, um, there had to be um, serious surveillance conducted. So it's possible that something was missed and actually France hasn't been BT8 free, or the BTV8 free all this time. Um, if there's been a drop in herd immunity of livestock since the last outbreak, this might be why we're now seeing cases popping up. Um, the virus might also have been circulating in a wildlife reservoir because uh, the wildlife are not vaccinated. And again, a drop in the herd immunity since the last outbreak could just be allowing the spillover um, into now susceptible animals. Possibly there was illegal live vaccine use, but this is very unlikely because, again, France was believed to be BTV8 free, so why would anyone be vaccinating? Um, and also sequencing of the virus has ruled out any vaccine strain. The source of the original BTV outbreak in 2006 was never determined or identified. Um, so whatever that source was could be the cause of the new outbreak as well. So um, how is the UK responding to this new threat? Well, DEFRA has conducted a risk assessment which suggests that it is very likely or fairly likely um, that we will get blue tongue um, in the UK later in the summer this year. So the, um, this risk is dependent on a number of factors. Firstly, what happens in France? So once the vector se activity season starts again in France, will the virus keep spreading north towards Europe, in which case obviously, uh, sorry, towards the UK, in which case our risk will increase. It's also dependent on the summer weather. So if it's a warm, particularly warm <coughs> summer, then the virus replication is faster and there's greater midge activity, which means there's greater transmission of the virus. Um, we also, uh, the most likely way of it coming into the UK is infected midges blowing over from France, so um, it depends on the wind as well. And the impact of any kind of outbreak in the UK um, will be dependent on if there's any residual herd immunity left over um, from the free previous outbreak animals that were vaccinated previously. So there's currently no vaccine bank in the UK and DEFRA has no plans to stockpile. Um, if vaccination does take place, it would be on a voluntary basis, and there are fears that actually the uptake would be quite low. Um, in 2008, um, the vaccination campaign, as I showed you, was very successful, and this has kind of led to a perception amongst farmers that actually blue tongue um, is not a particularly um, highly perceived threat, and therefore they won't up, uh, be very likely to vaccinate, which is kind of counterintuitive. Um, but if there is an outbreak later in the year, then DEFRA will have to react. Um, but it's going to be a reactionary response rather than any precautionary response. So thank you very much for listening. And you'll probably be hearing more about Blue Tongue later in the year if it spreads to the UK. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. <laughs>